Melissa decides that Fox might be, they might be interested in hiring maybe an outside consultant to figure out whether the women are being paid less than men on a company-wide basis. And silly Melissa <laughs> thinks that might be something that the company would want to do. I don't, I don't know how many companies would want to do it, but it doesn't sound like there was much of an appetite at Fox. And you had a conversation, you allege, with Diane Brandy, who was for many years the general counsel at Fox and now still plays some sort of counsel role, as we understand it, or at least at this point did. And what happened in that conversation, Melissa? Well, you have to understand at the time that on my desk, there were two screeners from the Screen Actors Guild that had a bombshell and the loudest voice. And they oh, had boy. actors playing Diane Brandy behaving illegally towards women in the Roger Ailes situation. I, at the time, assumed that she no longer worked at the company, like many other people assumed. She did not work there any longer. When I said that I wanted to do my own negotiation, they sent me an email back saying, you'll be meeting one-on-one -on -one with Diane Brandy. I was shocked because I thought, wow, you're going to put her in a room alone with the woman uh, you know, to negotiate something. I, I wasn't even aware that she's still here. Uh, we ended up having a, a you know, a, a voice conversation. I had actually scripted out exactly what I wanted to say because my math and my points, I felt like I wanted to be crystal clear. I didn't want to misspeak any portion of it at all. Um, we started, you know, small talk. She's very nice. How are your kids? What's going on? Then she segued right into, um, you know, are you going to hand this off to someone else? It's not common for talent to do this for themselves. And no, I'm good. Um, and I, I said, you know, look, I, I think there's this disparity and I basically laid it out. Um, she said, well, you know, I want to stop you there. Um, you know, this is not the way you want to do this. You don't want to compare yourself to other people. And back, I said, no, no, I'm not comparing myself to other people. I'm saying that I've collected this data and I explained just like I basically, how I explained it to you, I went through how I did the comparisons and what I came up with. And finally she broke in and and she said, and, and I wrote it down verbatim, that's how the world works. Women make less than men. That's just a fact. And mm -hmm. at that point, I basically fell off my chair onto the ground. I mean, luckily we were on a speakerphone. So I, I just, I couldn't believe that she would say something like this, uh, being a woman, being where we had been in Fox, being through everything we've been through. Being a lawyer. Um, and when, when I recovered, being a lawyer, when, when I kind of recovered myself, I said, um, well, you know, the gender pay gap around the country is 70 cents on the dollar. My back of the envelope figures seem like we're running at, you know, 200, 300, a thousand percent in some cases. I would think we would want to be doing better, not worse, given where we came from. And she said, you know, you, you really, you don't know how to, this isn't how you want to do this. Um, I want to help you. Why don't you go back and think about what your counteroff would be? And, you know, the compensation committee meets in a couple of weeks and, you know, we can talk again before then. Um, and I got off the phone. Of course, they had scheduled this meeting about, you know, half an hour before my show. And I was just floored that someone, not only would you say that, but you would feel so insulated from any sort of pushback or any sort of punishment. And that you would feel free to just say that. What's funny is, I can't tell you how many people since reading that comment in print have reached out to me and said, it's so funny because that was my exact experience with her. Mm. And um, that rang so true, that part. And, and there were many stories of, of different negotiations and things where she had said something similarly outrageous. I think it's a, I, I don't know, I don't want to speculate. It's just a, an approach in negotiation or something, but it was uh, astonishing to me. Oh, that's um, interesting. I, yeah. Maybe, what, was it an, was it a tactic? Because it does seem impossible that a lawyer, any lawyer, would say such a such a reckless thing. She, right. I, I should tell the audience, the spokesperson for Fox News says, "quote Melissa Francis's version of that conversation is untrue and patently absurd." So they it deny is absurd. it. I agree with that. <laughs> it is totally absurd that she would say that. I hundred percent agree with the fact <laughs> it was absurd, and that's how I felt at the time. So, so, but there was a second step, as I understand it, involving somebody in human resources. So it, yes. your, your, it wasn't a one-stop deal for you. No, I mean, when that happened, I was stunned. And then I was really mad because I felt like I had 
really given so much time and effort. And I loved my job. I loved being mm. there. I loved my mm. shows. And that's how I actually started the conversation was, I'm grateful. I love this place. I love everything I have. I love the shows that I'm on. I'm grateful for the opportunity. You know, I think that I deserve a raise. This is a normal way to have a conversation. You know, I felt that way. So then I felt- And you hadn't gotten angry. a raise. You hadn't gotten anything no. much of a raise at all in like no. eight years or something. It had been, that was it, one of your Very incremental. Points. Yeah, very okay. incremental. But yeah. now I had gone over from- um, I'd been made a full-time host on Outnumbered, which had millions of viewers. Before that, I was a host on Fox Business, which has many, many fewer viewers. So it makes sense that somebody on Fox Business makes a fraction of what somebody on Fox News Channel makes. I had been named the new co-host publicly of Outnumbered. So all of a sudden, I had a job on the channel that makes all the money. And they pay the people, or so the agents have always told me, and the lawyers and everyone else, they pay the people on the channel that makes all the money more of the money than the people mm -hmm. on the channel that makes less money. Uh, so it seemed like my expectation was reasonable. Again, all I wanted was to be paid what was fair, not a penny more or a penny less. I felt like there was something discriminatory going on. And I was asking the question, is there? I was shut down so definitively in that conversation with her, I went to HR within the next day or two. I can't remember, Kevin could tell you exactly how long it was, but I marched in there and I sat down with HR, who in the past had dealt with me very fairly on other issues. Again, naive me, I thought that I was going to have a conversation and they were going to fix things. And I said, first of all, um, here are two screeners with Diane Brandy. And she's not sued these people who she's a private citizen. She has people portraying her here doing illegal things and she's not sued them for defamation. So that, I don't know, she's a lawyer. You would think if this was inaccurate, somebody would have done something. Why would you put me in a room with her? Why is she negotiating with me? And they said, well, she works in New Jersey. What? <laughs> that <laughs> things work just, differently there. <laughs> that was that was his answer. She's in New Jersey. I said, what? And he said, well, I can guarantee you, you'll never have to speak to her again. And I was like, okay, well, and I went through, I said, I'm going to read you a transcript of everything that happened. And I explained, I wrote down my parts, read it verbatim. I wrote down what she said afterwards, as we were speaking, I took notes and I filled in exactly afterwards. I read the whole thing and he and another woman in HR sat there stony faced, never said anything. And when it was over, I said, so what do you think? And he said, well, I don't, I don't know that we have a gender pay problem here. And I said, I demand an investigation, first of all, into Diane Brandy, second of all, into the gender pay discrimination that I very much believe is going on in this company. And I don't care. I, I don't need to be on television. I've been on television since I was six months old. I am lucky enough to be in a position where I don't support my family. So I will die on this motherfucking mountain before I will let this go because I am really mad. And they're just looking at me like I'm a crazy person, which I can understand at the end, but no reaction, no response, no. And this is somebody I dealt with in HR who had actually solved problems in the past very thoughtfully. And I'm starting to get the message that this isn't, no one, no one, no one wants to work on this. Like this no isn't. No one wants to go there. No, no. And I just stood up and I walked out and, and once again, I was floored that they didn't deny it. No one, remember to this point, there's no one that said, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Diane Brandy said, you're right. And F you. Live with it. All right. The HR said, we don't know this is a problem. But we're not, not that interested in checking it out. This is not a problem. <laughs> so, so now, all right, so let me go to Kevin on this one. Yeah. Because normally, yeah. having worked at Fox News for many years, I can say, Everyone there, especially talent, has an arbitration clause in their contract. And that means if you find yourself in a dispute with your employer, you've got to arbitrate. This is Gretchen Carlson's whole thing. Remember, she was very angry that, you know, everything had to go to arbitration and you couldn't put it out in the public. Um, but in any event, in a hypothetical scenario, a person in Melissa's position, angry about this and thinking there's this kind of a problem, would have no choice other to, than to commence an arbitration. You cannot go into federal court file litigation it's not on the table for you and also you would be you would be prohibited from discussing the fact that you had done that thing you can't even talk about the fact that you filed an arbitration i know this from having signed my own fox deals um 
So far, do you agree with my framing of the general scenario, Kevin? Hi, in my experience, Megan, that's the way it works. So just having understood that, let me just ask you for just for the record, um, did Melissa file an arbitration against Fox? We're not able to talk about that. OK, um, so did everything wrap up amicably where then somebody called you and said, we've seen the light and here's a huge raise to make things better? Who wants to take oh, that? Are you asking me or Kevin? Well, yeah, I, no, whoever no. can take it. Uh, yeah. you, you take it, Melissa. Kevin will jump in if you say something you shouldn't say. Um, yeah, no, that's that's unfortunately not what happened. Um, I pursued the path that I am supposed to follow um, as I pursue this. In the meantime, you have to remember it was COVID. They built a studio in my home. Um, I was doing the noon show and the four o'clock show from home. I was on every night. Um, you know, it things it life was continuing as normal, you know, you're for working a long without a contract after, at this point at this conversation. Um, I was working without a contract. That sounds, yeah. I think that's true. Kevin, you can correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. I, I think you had a contract that continued. You didn't have a new contract, right? Okay. It, you yeah. had okay. one that just carried over. Okay. So you're doing so a show. I, so you're doing a show on Fox business and you're doing outnumbered from your home. Cause it's COVID yep. every day, like yeah. clockwork. Yeah. And, and it's all, it's all going along. Great ratings are through the roof. Um, and then one day, um, they called out of the blue, um, called Kevin and let him know that I, my on-air Which just, services I should no pause. Why did they call Kevin? Because you, you did hire a lawyer that we know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And Kevin, um, you can say that you were in touch with Fox news. Yes. There you go. We were in touch and there was a process that we were following. That was something that was, we were allowed to do. And in the course of that process, I had had communications with their lawyers, as you'd expect. And so yeah. um, I got a call about, I don't know, uh, 10 minutes before they did what um, Melissa is about to describe what they did. What yeah, happened, so Melissa? He, he got a call and he said that my services were no longer needed on the air. Um, and I said, well, they they can't mean the show in 10 minutes because we all know you can't get an anchor in the chair that quickly you know, I, I'm going to just go over and sit in my living room for my second show. And then if they want me not you're, you're on tomorrow, t- whatever it is, that's 10 fine. minutes so, to air, 10 minutes yes. to air at this point. That's right. So, so the lights go on. I, I have a, um, robotic camera. Um, so I don't have the power to turn any of it on and off that's done from the studio. So the lights come on, the teleprompter comes on, you know, it's funny. My kids used to joke that everybody knew when I was about to do television because the living room electrified and everything just started buzzing and whirring. Um, so it was all on. I went over, I sat down, I clipped on my mic, I checked in, we talked to the producers, we did the whole thing. They're in the countdown, you know, I was at the closing bell, you know, so there's five, four, and you're listening, ding, 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 ding on Wall Street. And I'm about to go and it comes up in the prompter, you've been canceled. And I said, what, what's going on? And all of a sudden everything went dead in my living room. There is so much to love about fall from the cooler temperatures to the changing leaves, the pumpkin spiced everything. Just ask Michael Knowles. (laughs) What better way to soak up the best of the season than with a Michael Phelps swim spa by Master Spas? A Michael Phelps swim spa combines the benefits of a pool with the therapy of a hot tub. It comes in a variety of sizes to complement almost any yard, even if it's a small backyard. Master Spas worked with Michael Phelps, the one and only, to develop an at-home training and fitness solution that you can use year-round in any season. Yes, even in the winter. Exercising in the water is a great way to include physical activity in your daily life, whether you're a beginner or a fitness enthusiast. Relax after an afternoon of raking leaves and yard work. I mean, you can do that there whatever day you want. The hydrotherapy jets are going to massage away any aches or pains. Now, as your fall calendar fills up, a Michael Phelps swim spa is the perfect place to spend time together as a family. The swim spa draws people outdoors, and the kids will love splashing and playing in the swim area. Michael Phelps Swim Spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas. That's the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. A Michael Phelps Swim Spa is energy efficient too. You can use it all year long. Go to masterspas.com, put in the promo code MK to save $1,000 on a Michael Phelps Swim Spa or $500 on a Master Spas hot tub. That's masterspas.com, promo code MK. 
Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.